Hello, Johanna. Hi, Tony. Welcome back to the show, talking about tapes. Hello. And welcome back from your trip. You went to DC for some reason. I forget why you went out there, but I hope you had a good time out there. It was a great time. I'm sure it was great. Uh, So some things have changed here. Uh, Well, our mics look like the mics we shot with last time. Yes. We did get these mechanical arms with these nicer mics, but they were way too goddamn big. I think Newt's face was covered in the wide shot most of the time in the last episode. So Is that we a are, problem, though? Yeah, we're getting <laughs> smaller arms so we can use the nice mics. So for this episode, we're back here. Some other things have changed. You might have noticed we are no longer shooting on the, uh, oh, God, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera. I don't know what any of this means. Okay, so this <laughs> is what we've been shooting the show on. Okay. Shoots of 4K. This is a great camera. This camera is awesome. It was not meant for this kind of show. For one, okay. the, the lenses are prime, so that means they're all manual. And I don't know if you know this, but we don't have a crew. So uh, I had I mean, to be- We have a dummy over there. We have a dummy over there. <laughs> so we had to be careful with the focus, but if we like move back or something, we would go out of focus. There was a couple uh, episodes okay. where me or New went out of focus. So we're still gonna use these for like skits or I mean, just stuff that happens, not skits. What is this? This is a real show. Stuff uh, like skits? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do use this for other things, more cinematic stuff. So in the meantime, uh, we are shooting on, uh, hold on, yeah, Canon XA45 cameras. So we still have 4K footage. The lenses aren't as nice, but the file sizes are a lot smaller because here's a problem I ran into. The files in that camera are very, very big to the point I couldn't fit them on a terabyte hard drive to bring them home to edit. <laughs> so I had to spend huh. a few weekends here editing the goddamn show. So Sounds like a you problem. Yeah, slightly less resolution cameras, but it will help us in the end. I don't think anyone's really gonna care because it's still 4K, it's still a three camera setup. I think they look great. Uh, yeah, the problem is I don't know how I'm gonna afford this because I went through my stimulus check pretty fast. Well, Tony, I have a solution for you. Oh, oh, okay. When I went to DC, I brought back some stuff. Oh, you brought back some stuff from DC. That's, that's great. Like souvenirs or like, yeah. Okay. Uh, well let's, let's see. What's this? You have some kind of package here. These are like, oh, these look like opened envelopes. I assume those are like historical envelopes. Yes, they are. Wow. I can't wait to read them and see what they are. Uh, police. Hat. Did you buy like a costume hat? For yeah, a- there's just, you know, so much merchandise you can buy now in the stores. Huh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, let's see, you have a, a blank VHS tape here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, what's what, what's going on here? This looks like, this looks like a prop alien head. It's my favorite, yeah. In a, uh, in a spaceman helmet, mm-hmm. bizarre. Oh, we got some film in here. Some old film. Let me see. What is this? This looks like a grassy knoll. Uh, I'm not sure why there's a film strip of a grassy knoll. Uh, God, this is fucking just endless here. Oh, we got another film strip. We got another film strip. This looks like... This great. You know what? I think this might be... And I don't know why this is in DC. This looks like a deleted scene from 2001 in Space Odyssey because it's the moon. Mm-hmm. But I can see Stanley Kubrick in the shot. That's I don't remember the shot in the in the movie. So it's very, very rare deleted scene. Yeah. So thanks for this, and thanks for what I assume is a replica Revolutionary War yeah, flag. Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks like you just pulled it out of some historical building. That's yeah. That's crazy. So yeah, stay by, stay tuned. Maybe I'll sell some of the stuff in this box Johanna brought. That's great. You're welcome, Tony. Thank you. You know what's not great. <sighs> King Kong lives. <laughs> Why do you make me watch this stuff? <laughs> so we should probably mention we have a podcast that we do together. Yes, Ca- we do. Castilla versus the Pod Monster. Video versions are now on their own YouTube channel. Yep. Because while people really love that show, they don't love it as much as this show. Yeah. <laughs> and the low views were hurting the growth of this show. <laughs> But we moved it to its own channel. I mean, you should be listening on podcast apps anyway. So it still exists. We'll link to the description. Uh, So yeah, we we tend to mostly do Toho stuff. 
But on this show, we decided to dip into some good old fashioned American giant monsters, Yay. and uh, we did we did the seventy six King Kong. Which I think we both agreed was not a great movie, but it was very it, enjoyable. It's, it's not terrible. Yeah. But it's not great. Yes, and Jessica Lang was very, very attractive. <laughs> Such a babe. <laughs> Such a babe. <laughs> so uh, ten years later, they decided to make a sequel, King Kong Lives, and I think we both uh, we both talked in the last one that he had a pretty definitive death. I don't know how you I don't know how you live that one. There was so one. much blood. <laughs> uh, so I have it here. Uh, Dino De Laurentiis, the producer, yep. he wanted to make a King Kong sequel. Uh, he even said, and this is bizarre because I don't know what movie he's referencing. He said, Steve McQueen made a, and imagine like a super Italian voice. I don't feel like doing the Italian voice. Steve McQueen made a picture in which he died at the end. But then they made another picture with Steve McQueen. Many stars die at the end of a picture, then go on to the next pink picture. Kong is a star. We're going to have a new story, a new Kong. It's a huh. very confusing sentence. <laughs> so, uh, did he want to do like a brand new Kong, like a new ape? I don't. Or just new movie? I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, the process to making the huh. sequel is very, very hard uh, because there's a lot of rights issues over who owns Kong. And uh, I will recommend our good friend James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd. He reviewed both of these movies uh, a few years ago. And he, there's a section in that review where he talks about the legal battle that went on. Wasn't it something with like Paramount? Paramount, Universal Universal claimed to own it. Paramount claimed to own it. Universal and Paramount were going to make them at the same time. The creator owned it. And then they argued is it in public domain. It was a shit show from what I could tell. His video explains it perfectly so go check that out uh but yeah so john gillerman's back the director he wanted to make a movie called Tai pan with sean connery they ended up this movie ended up getting made and we'll mention that at the uh end of the episode it ended up getting made not with sean connery or this director uh but yeah they brought him back for king kong lives and uh they tried to convince dino de Laurentiis that there should be a lady kong and he seemed to not be into it so they explained it to him uh it's hard enough to accept that there's a king kong that's been around for 50 years becoming a pop culture hero no oh and then dino de laurent says no one is going to believe a female ape and the writer said dino he had to have had a mother and dino said by god you're right i never thought of that there can be a female so dino de laurent is just thought kong's come out of thin air i guess he he was big into intelligent design. They just magically just appear. <laughs> it's like a chicken and the egg story. Like, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, let's get let's get into this movie. Yay! Uh, it opens up with the unforgettable ending of the previous movie, which we will never forget the ending of that no. previous movie. But it also like causes a problem because it's like he was shot thousands of times and then fell there off was the World Trade blood. Center. Everywhere, and he fell off the World Trade Center. <laughs> like, you're not getting up from that. But uh, apparently, he was alive, even though I think we heard his heart die. But uh, they kept him. So the military and the scientists and stuff that were all trying to kill him because he was murdering people. When they when he finally died, they were like, "Well, we got to keep him alive <laughs> for some reason." This isn't like when like a cr- murderer gets shot and they keep him alive so he could stand trial. This is a giant ape. You just let the thing die. <laughs> uh, but Linda Hamilton is the star of this one <laughs> as Lady Doctor. I don't know her name. I don't, I don't remember. I <laughs> This was so hard to get through. I don't remember anybody's name. So Linda Hamilton's in it. She's the star of the film. And uh, I will say, like, toward toward the end of the film, I'll get back to it. She's very different than the usual kind of woman that's in these movies. So that's a plus. She still seemed bored as hell. Well, she was bored as hell. But the way the character is written, it's not like a damsel in distress. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Also, two years prior, she was in The Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. This is where you go to? Yeah. Well, apparently she saw how good it did for Jessica Lange. And uh, unfortunately, it did not have the same effect on her. Uh, so they want to give Kong a mechanical heart, but he won't survive the surgery unless he gets a blood transfusion. Now, we we still can't figure out, and I don't think anyone ever explains in this movie, why are they keeping King Kong alive? What is 
the point of keeping King Kong alive? Like, I, I don't even understand as like a scientific point because if they want to study a big ape, they have the woman. Well, we'll get to that. Well, well, this is before that. Still. But it's at no point do they say, hey, let we want to return him to his island and study him. It seems like they just want to bring him back to life and just lock him up. I, I don't know. It just seems really bizarre. Plot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we cut to Borneo. Uh, and there's this guy. John Mitchell is the character name, I think. Uh, and he finds Lady Kong, not Queen Kong, which I have a copy of somewhere. That is a parody of King Kong from the 70s, I believe. That's, well, I don't want to say it's funny, but uh, I think the tagline. I thought you were going to say porn. No, but the tagline of the movie, I think, is like, it's like her time of the month again or something like that. I mean, something like that. Uh, but Queen Kong, it's like an airplane style comedy. It's like, sp- it's a very spoof movie. So, but I guess they couldn't say Queen Kong. So this is Lady Kong. And you can you can't be confused with regular Kong. They 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 knew people would get confused. So what they did is they made her brown and gave her Kong. Oh, no, they're she's red. Or red. It's like red. <laughs> but yeah, I so she has Kong tits. So, <laughs> they literally just put Kong tits on the male Kong suit. <laughs> so, so gorillas do have like I, I know, a, a bit I of know. A, but like they were so distracting. They were, because it's literally like, it seems like they made two Kong suits and they're like, oh, one's a woman. Give it Slap some saggy boobies on there. Yeah, they are like saggy. They look like they were put they're on like after deflated. the like <laughs> Good God. I couldn't. All right, so I've only ever seen this like maybe once or twice as a kid. And I forgot a lot of this movie, so I seen the contest. I was like, oh no. Oh no. The moment I saw that, I literally sat there like, are you kidding me? Yeah. By the way, I love the previous movie. It's like, yes, this beast lives on an island surrounded by fog. You can't find it anywhere. It's like, oh yeah, there's another one in Borneo. No one ever brought it up before. They just hang around in Borneo, I guess. <sighs> uh, but a bunch of natives help John Mitchell and they like shoot darts into it, knocks it out. Uh, they, they end up calling him. John Mitchell is like trying to sell this ape and the scientists call them. They're like, we got to make an offer on this because we're going to lose it. Yeah. And Linda Hamilton's like, we probably shouldn't bring a female ape here. It's probably going to excite him too much. And they're like, well, where else are we going to get the blood for this thing? So, uh, the university ignores her and they buy Lady Kong. (laughs) Everything. It it sounds like I'm making up the plot to a fake movie. It really does. It it really does. (laughs) If someone said, hey, Tony, come up with a plot to a sequel to Kong 76, I'd be like, ah, there's a Lady Kong and they got to put a new heart in him. It doesn't sound real. Uh, So yeah, so apparently both Kongs have the trait of falling in love with attractive people. Lady Kong, well, I mean... Uh, the movie says the guy's attractive. Lady yeah, Kong the is movie in love. Says. Yeah, Lady Kong has a crush on the John Mitchell character. Apparently, you do not. You do not have the same taste as a giant gorilla. Apparently, thank God. <laughs> uh, but I like that both Kongs can be perverts, regardless of gender. They're both perverts. Well, I mean, at least like he's not like. Well, she's not like blowing on him and like (laughs) trying to rip his clothes off. (laughs) So this part is shocking. They bring Lady Kong to the States and there are so many reporters there. Do they all forget what happened in the previous movie? You just see her giant feet in the background. They're all like crowding around and it's like, like, can you not? So it looks like they built full size Kongs, but they used them a lot. The full size, they're like, Kong's going to be laying down in a coma in this scene. Better than the blue screen. But, yeah, but I'm saying like the previous movie when they had the full size Kong and they try to pass it sitting, off. It's like, like they're <laughs> like, yes, we'll use the full size Kong. But when it's laying down and sleeping, that was look, this movie doesn't make a lot of smart decisions. That was a smart decision on their part. But why aren't the why are the reporters so eager to get so close to the thing? Do they all forget the other one just broke out? Apparently. <laughs> I mean, again, like it, it, going to Godzilla stuff, how they all just crowd around <laughs> yeah, and like, oh, just... nothing will happen to me. Oh, it's a giant egg. It's like, yeah, like Mothra, we should probably get away from it. <laughs> just take it easy. You are dealing with a lady. They start to do the surgery. Yeah. And it goes on for like 20 minutes. It's so 
long. So I don't need to see you bringing all the tubes over for the blood transfusion. Oh, yeah. I don't care. Just little clips. Like that's there's all you lot, had to do. There's a lot of padding in this. Oh uh, my god. So they're bringing the heart, and then it almost falls. And they like cut his heart out, and and then, doesn't he like start like bleeding everywhere? So like right before they lower his heart in, or whatever, yeah. they start like panicking, like oh, yeah. like drain yeah. the blood or something. I forget. But it's like, so are we supposed to? It's hard to get invested in it and be like, oh, I hope Kong lives. It's like he's a murderer, like what? And none of these characters have any relations. It's not like Jessica Lang and Jeff Bridges yeah, are there. Like, I, suddenly everybody's like, yeah, we love Kong, and it's just like, who are you? Who, like, did you not see what he just did prior? No, like Jessica Lang and Jeff Bridges, maybe, but everyone else are like, yeah, that big gorilla that like crashed that train and threw that chick. Like, no, this Kong is scary. No one wants him to live. <laughs> Uh, but he does live, and King there's Kong a big, lives. There's yeah, King Kong lives. There's a big celebration, and I don't know if you caught this. So a lot of people are celebrating, waving flags, and then there's the a Confederate little Confederate flag. There's a little person of color, boy, and he's waving a Confederate flag, and I'm like, huh? I'm like, that's that would. Oh no, I saw that right away, and I was like, <laughs> so I think the idea was and how people probably justify the flag back then is like, yeah, it's a symbol of like hating authority and the government. And it's like, maybe, but regardless, it is very, no. it's very jarring. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the uh, famous country song, Country for Life. Country for Life, yeah, yeah, yo. Doing it like Bow and Duke on the... Deuce of hazard, yeah, it's true. Yeah, hitting these haters though, like with this legendary flow, but they keep coming back for more. Kong wakes up and he can smell the female ape, I guess. He's like ripping out the tubes and then he's like trying to jump up <laughs> on the bars. I mean, he's yeah. also like looking at the moon going like, ugh. Yeah, so his first thought after 10 years in a coma, by the way, he doesn't have atrophy apparently. His first thought is like, I gotta get laid. I gotta, gotta get, get laid. Gotta it's get like, that wop. Yeah. <laughs> was there was there an Italian gentleman in this? That was a very offensive term, Johanna. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they they Johanna they had ten years to figure out how to restrain Kong. They had ten ten years. <sighs> he wakes up and just breaks the chains right away. Break the fuck away. Also, I like how there's like no scar or anything on his chest. They yeah, he's the just bandage. totally fine. He's, he's just, just totally fine. Oh, yeah, like the mechanical heart and he's so, good. He's good to go. <laughs> yeah. I love the recovery one, time. <laughs> the one goes, the other monkey's gone ape shit. It's like, well, which one is it? Monkey or ape? You gotta decide which one it is. Uh, Kong shows up and he saves Lady Kong. It's so fucking... The, all right, so you guys don't understand. And maybe it's not showing well because it's a horrible VHS footage. Like, at no point, I don't know if maybe, maybe the movie was able to, like, make you suspend your disbelief. But for me, watching this movie, at no point did I think, oh, these are two giant gorillas. The entire time, I'm like, these are two men in ape suits pretending oh, to no. be in love. Yeah. <laughs> like, like... Not like these are clearly two stuntmen, and I'm imagining the director be like, "Okay, smile at each other, like just hold each other." My favorite was when Kong picked up the snake, and it scared Lady Kong because oh. girls don't like icky creatures. <laughs> yes. Got to make sure that's a girl thing. Yes, giant, giant regular gorillas would probably throw the goddamn snake and beat the shit out of. It. <laughs> Uh, so, so I have it in here. We just made fun of Kong, but the, the Kong suits are terrible. All the other effects at this point in the movie have not been terrible. They're like okay. They're okay. Also, the suits look like something I would buy at like Party City. They don't look anywhere near as good as the previous movie suit. Yeah, so, like the other one, it isn't like the most like wonderful thing ever, or whatever. But like it was still pretty good. Keep but, it. Keep on, in mind. At this point, yeah. at this point in this year, you've had things like Star Wars that came out that yeah. looks thousands of leagues better. Yeah. Uh, we should point out 
We watched a VHS rip of this. I assume you watched it on your big screen at home. I watched, oh, yeah. I watched it on the 82 or 84 inch. I watched it on my computer screen. Oh, okay. Uh, so maybe we're not watching like the latest Blu-ray quality. Maybe it looks much better. Maybe it's the quality of the VHS we have that makes the effects look bad. Let's give it the benefit of the no. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Uh, no. Okay. So um, no. the army is hunting Kong and Hamilton and Mitchell. I forget the actor's name, so I think I'm saying his character's name. Uh, they're trying to find them first. And uh, I take back everything I said about the effects in the previous scene. The Kongs on a miniature set. It looks like Power Rangers. It's so bad. And like the whole the whole time, it wants you to be like, look how romantic they are. By the way, I don't know if I can get into gorillas being romantic. I, uh, I honest to God, so... Obviously, like spoilers, you know, yeah. they do end up freaking. I'm actually a thousand. T I'm like so shocked they didn't actually show it or at least like alluding to like someone's about to go down. They probably could have because have you ever seen gorillas have sex? Yes. It's really bland. Like the guy just gets back and he's like, Argh! and then they're done. It's like, oh, that reminded me of the turtle. <laughs> Turtles seem to be enjoying one. It's like, who's that? Bruno <laughs> Mars had that song, like, uh, bang, bang, like gorillas. And someone actually, I think someone cut that song to actual gorilla sex in some video. And like, the gorillas just seem like they're like, it's so like, okay, I am inserting, I am done, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem passionate or anything. <laughs> The internet has too much time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so <sighs> it looks, it looks like Power Rangers. The the whole the whole miniature set looks, looks awful. Like Power Rangers is better, huh? Power Rangers is at least better. Yeah, probably. Uh, oh, probably and, yes. <laughs> and again, and again, I. By the way, the miniature sets like they just look like guys in gorilla suits. And the miniatures, I keep, I, they, they look so bad. I'm like, oh, these are guys in gorilla suits on like a toy set. Like this, I'm never immersed in the effect. And like, I can't believe how much better the 70s one was because we thought some of the effects in that were dodgy, but the blue they're screen, so much better. The blue screen and like, I know I made fun of the one scene where like, what was it? Kong was like reaching down or whatever it was when uh, Jeff Bridges was like hiding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some and dodgy. And you can clearly see like the rock move and it yeah, yeah. doesn't edit him out. Yeah. Like, I forgive all that stuff yeah. looking at this now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, so Lynn Hamilton and the other guy, they're they are trying to find him and they walk across a rickety bridge. Yeah, were they supposed to do like a romantic thing with them with this? Like, is that what they were going with? Like, oh. Yeah, like he saves her and I guess she's in love with him yeah, now. Like, I This feels like, there's a lot of this movie that feels like padding. And this feels like padding. Really? I'm like, <laughs> do we need the... The bridge. I'm um, falling. Why off do the we need this? So it's not even like it's not even like the rehashing Kong breaking the bridge. It's like, oh, I'm on a rickety bridge, and oh no. Why did we need the scenes with Kong and Lady Kong to last that long? I guess we're talk about padding. I guess we're supposed to care about their relationship. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he saves her, and it's like, what? And by the way, who builds a bridge at the very end of a waterfall? They wanted the view or something. I don't know. P plot. I, 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 <laughs> I was just gonna I, say. There's no excuse. I was gonna say, like, I mean, I I probably wouldn't build a bridge at the end of a waterfall. I'd probably build it further back and put a net down in case someone fell. <laughs> um, yeah, so they find the Kongs. Uh, and like the Mitchell guy is like, if we get them, we can send them back to Borneo or Kong Island. And uh, this is where my brain turned on. I was like, I wonder how the natives are doing on Skull Island. Like, because Jeff Bridges said they were all going to be like drunk assholes. And like, we never revisited. I, w I wanted to see if Linda Hamilton huh. would be like, no, Jeff Bridges was right. They're all drunks now. <laughs> he would be like, who's Jeff Bridges? <laughs> I still think it was mean Jeff Bridges said that. Because if go back and watch our King Kong 76 yeah. video, like Jeff Bridge is like, we took Kong away from them. Those natives, they're going to be all drunks. Yeah, because we took away like we took away their God. And it's yeah. like, no, I'm pretty sure they lived in fear and they're happy. It's gone. <laughs> we don't have to sacrifice our women anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. I think this is a great. I would be getting drunk after that. I'd be like, hell yeah. yeah I think it's a celebratory Ooh. drunk. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we find out that the Kongs aren't the only horny ones. Linda Hamilton, who's hated the guy character from the beginning, is now horny. And she's like, come into my sleeping bag. You know what? That brings up another point of the dude. Yeah. Only wanted to sell Lady Kong in the beginning. Wanted yeah. to make money. Now, all of a sudden, he 
cares about her and her yeah. well being and wants her to be okay. Also, I, wanna, just like, I wanna point out like they didn't get horny until they realized the Kongs were gonna fuck and they gave them their privacy and then Linda Hamilton's like, I'm kinda turned on now. It's like, wait, what? What did the pheromones from Lady Kong interact with your pheromone? Like, what the fuck is? Maybe going- she's turned on by gorillas doing the thing. I don't think I've ever seen like two dogs humping and been like hopped. I suddenly want to have sex. Like, that's not how it works. I would hope not. <laughs> oh my god, it's weird, right? Then Hamilton's like, oh, those giant murdering apes are gonna have sex. I want to get laid right now. <laughs> I hated this movie. I hate this movie so much. <laughs> That ape, who I want to remind you guys, if you watched the previous movie, mm. destroyed a train car, pulled out a woman, and just tossed her. <laughs> Linda <laughs> Hamilton is looking at that same ape being like, what a handsome guy. I need to get... <laughs> okay, so they wake up and realize King Kong is gone. It's only Lady Kong that's there. And we get one frame of Linda Hamilton's tits. Bless. She gets out of the thing. It's it's so weird. I, is the movie rated R? One second. Uh. Uh, PG-13. This is PG-13. This is why the MPAA sucks because they're always changing their mind like what is and isn't allowed. So there's blood and gore in this and a tit for a second, PG-13. You cannot get away with that these days. Anyway, so we, we see a tit for a second. <laughs> uh, and yeah, again, I can't get over how bad the miniatures on blue screen look. Kong is like climbing a mountain in the daytime. It gets worse as it goes on too. It's like they ran out of money and they they ran out of money like as they were making more and more blue screen shots. You'd think they'd be like, hey, let's let's chill with some of this. Um, Lady Kong is captured and King Kong is uh, not happy about this. Uh, but he gets attacked and he escapes in the river and he bumps his head on a rock and they all think he's dead. And the main army guy says, not even your King Kong could survive that. He was shot by helicopters and fell off the World Trade Center. And he survived that. The The army guy should be like, for all we know, he's still alive. Let's just throw rockets into the river just to be safe. Also, just, I like how just his heart was affected, not like his bones. Yeah, so, yeah it's they, it's really hit or miss, like, what affects him or not. She's like, his heart, it's like, yeah, he's probably going to bleed out. He's shot and bleeding everywhere. But it's like, it's like if you saw me fall off the roof of this building after getting shot a million I times. Wish. <laughs> I, I, fell, I wish. And then I survived. <laughs> and then, like, uh. Like a year later, I like fall off a curb and scratch my knee, and you'd be like, "There's no way he's gonna survive that." It's like, <laughs> "Hey, I fell off a building and I survived." Like, it's so weird because it's not like people don't know Kong's history. It should have been the most amazing thing to have ever happened in history. Like he would know, like, "Oh, he's he fell off from a way higher thing and survived." <laughs> I hate this movie. <laughs> yeah. So Lady Kong is held captive. And I can't stress enough how bad the blue screen is. And they decided to have 10,000 blue screen shots where characters are talking with Lady Kong in the back. And by the way, I think... Again, it's, it kept getting worse. It's hard to tell in this version, but I think one of the problems is I think everything is in focus. It's not like they put a little blur on her in the mm. back. <laughs> they do. They get so bad. Uh, so somehow Linda Hamilton gets a letter from the Justice Department where she's able to like visit... And Linda Hamilton has figured out that the apes are not only can they smell each other, but they're psychic. They, she's like, she knows Kong's alive. It's after they banged. They got that psychic link. Is that a, is that a giant gorilla trait? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I don't think I've ever had psychic links with anyone, so I don't know. What's... Well, you're not a gorilla. That's true. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so the Kong, oh, so they're like, Kong is dead. He's so big. There's no way he can have enough protein to sustain his diet. What's he going to eat? And then it cuts to Kong in the swamp. Fuck this movie. So he picks up a, a baby uh, alligator. It is specifically a baby alligator. It's snout isn't grown enough yet. Yeah. And it wants, it wants us, the viewer to think that this is a big alligator. This, okay, this is be like if they wanted Kong to like fight a dog and they brought a puppy in. 
Like we know the difference between a puppy and it. Like the that's a baby alligator. And then they cut because they wanted the reaction shot from the alligator for some goddamn reason. They cut to like an adult alligator, which looks nothing like the baby alligator. And the funniest part about this, as he's like breaking its head and he's putting them on a stick, they just cut to a frog reacting to everything. <laughs> <laughs> just like there's, there's so in this movie there's just a frog that's like it's a big gorilla glad that wasn't me <laughs> i don't even think the frog can comprehend what's going on like oh like like when he breaks the alligator's neck it cuts the frog going it's like, what the f-? maybe it was <laughs> supposed to be like a comedy thing i don't i don't and know he's like putting them on like a stick like a combine <laughs> so Cut to uh, however however many months uh, it takes for a Kong to give a babe to have a baby. Months later, Linda Hamilton and the guy are now super in love. They're they're like they're like super romantic for some reason. They they find out Lady Kong is sad, and they think she's dying. But we as the viewer know like she she's pregnant. Like it's it's really freaking out. You're not gonna put a Lady Kong in this movie and not deliver on yeah. her getting like it's not like deliver. okay. That was a good one. That was a good one. Everyone clap. Clap for Johanna. Thank clap. you. Clap. God damn it. Okay, so how has Kong gone unnoticed for this long? Plot. I, I, can't, I, 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 can't, I can't even argue for it. Because I was thinking about it because he does need to eat a lot. He's yeah. gigantic. He would be just... Dist- also, where would he be hiding? That's another good one. I, mean, I guess they're in like a weird... They're in like a weird thing where they're in the south, but there's mountains everywhere. But... He would be destroying the ecosystem of wherever he was. Like, it would be real easy to the find him. The army would have literally been brought in already. They would be doing helicopter flights like, all the time. But it'd be like, hey, guys, did you notice there's, like, a shocking lack of deer around? And, like, the, hey, I noticed in the swamp, like, a lot of these animals are overpopulating because all the alligators are gone. Should we maybe check the swamp? <laughs> like, it's like he couldn't go that unnoticed for that long. It's ridiculous. I hate this movie. Uh, and then I guess for some reason he shows up in civilization. He interrupts like a couple that are like making out. the weirdest. Th- right. He's like a peeping Tom during that scene. He's just like, hey, they're about to get freaky. I remember when I got freaky. How are you? How are you doing in there? Hey. So he shows up in this town oh. and then the town is like, it's all like rednecks and the guy gets on a motorcycle. Then everyone else is getting into boats and trucks. And then he like drives underneath Kong's legs. And I was expect. I'm like, all right, they're showing how cool this guy is. Cause clearly they're going to kill him. And then they, they don't. Yeah, nothing happened. Kong literally looks and goes, huh? And then walks away. It's like, what the fuck was the point of that? And maybe he was just like, oh yeah, that was rad, dude. <laughs> you, you can live. You can live. Only uh, you though. And this part I thought was really unrealistic. There was like a bunch of hillbillies. With, like, guns and I stuff. I hated this scene so much. Right, well, well, the, you want to talk about padding? Yeah, so there's a bunch of hillbillies that are like, we're going to get them, blah, blah, blah. And the military comes out, and they're like, you guys can't do that. And like, yes, we can. I thought it was really unrealistic that the uh, military armed forces could not stop a roaming gang of hillbillies. I was like, what in what world? What world? Did I ask you how your DC trip went, by the way? Are you crying? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so the rednecks are camping out. They find Kong and they uh, they set off some dynamite and they bury him in an avalanche. An avalanche that conveniently stops right where their camp starts. <laughs> and then uh, he, he's like stuck up to here. Yeah. So they had an excuse to use the full size head and they I wanted to say they were smart by not showing the face of the full size head because obviously it would look bad. But whoever was in charge of the big head effect, they were like, the blue screen's going to look a lot better. And I imagine that person sat in the theater going, oh my God, it looks so much worse than what we did. Uh, so yeah, they're like torturing Kong. They give him alcohol and then he spits it out at them. And they're yeah. like, oh, that's good stuff. What are you doing? And it's just like, you yeah. expect a gorilla or any type of animal not to spit out alcohol, especially liquor. Yeah. And then the one like right wing redneck guy, he gets like a conscience and uh, he betrays them. Much like Richard Spencer betrayed the alt-right and he told everyone to vote for Biden. So he's like the Richard oh Spencer God. of this movie. Uh, Kong breaks out. He explodes out of the thing. And I, I was not ready for this level of violence in the movie, by the way, because it's been pretty tame. <laughs> and then he gets the other guy. And I, I was fucking 
die. I was laughing so hard. See, they, they draw the line at animal cruelty. Oh, okay. But people are fine. Yeah. So they grab, he grabs the other guy and he eats him. And then he's like, oh, or something in my teeth. And he pulls out the guy's hat. And I was just, I bursted out laughing. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And it'd be one thing if this was just a straight up comedy, but it's not. So nope. those scenes feel weird. <laughs> um, yeah, so all this excitement is hurting Kong's robot heart. He's like, he's like, oh man, um, so that's hurting. And then Linda Hamilton's got her like machine that syncs up with the heart. And she's like, I gotta do the sequence to fix his heart. And then Kong gets in the way and steps on the machine. She's like, he won't last a day now. <laughs> uh, then they go this fucking scene. They go to the camp with the hillbillies where they're all dead. And she's like, Kong, you've killed. There's nothing stopping them from killing you now. It's like, yeah, yeah, Kong killed. He was in New York and he killed a lot of people 10 years. He's already a killer. Shocking. It, as soon as he- Did they forget? As soon as he broke, it doesn't matter if he kills new people. As soon as he broke out of the facility, they're like, oh, he's a killer. We got to kill him. It, it, new people doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, so Kong is walking around in the daytime and he steps on a car. And by car, I mean they went to like a store and they bought like a miniature model kit. I hate, uh, I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, but then it I comes to it. some guy going, My dad's gonna kill me. And it's like, I think, I think you, you're gonna get away with this. It's not like you're drunk driving or just being yeah. an asshole trying to show off for a girl was or he, something was like he that. Like, like, did I miss it? Did he, was he like, Oh, I stole my dad's car? Like, Maybe that, but it's like, you're like, hey, dad, I couldn't predict that a giant gorilla would start walking around and crushing the car. I noticed that in this movie, Kong actually walks on all fours like a regular gorilla most mm -hmm. of the time. I mean, he does still stand up and walk, but that's all, that also weirded me out because of the previous movie, he didn't do that. And now his arms are bigger. I'm like, what the, f what happened here? What, is this the same Kong? <laughs> uh, so that was stupid. Um, the army has Lady Kong surrounded. Uh, and King Kong shows up to save her in this giant 60 foot girl. Oh, uh, what was it? Uh, Linda Hamilton or whatever and the dude are like trying to break in. To, like, oh, yeah. get to... They're like, we'll go in so, at nighttime. So military, right? Yeah. The army and stuff. So when the dude finally breaks in and he's running, they just whack him with the gun instead of actually shooting him. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when I'm breaking into a uh, military base at night, I make sure to wear the brightest colors. Pop. I make sure to wear bright white so I can blend in with the shadow. I hate this movie. <laughs> uh, but you know who is really good at stealth? <laughs> King Kong, apparently. The 60-foot gorilla is walking quietly so the military doesn't hear well, him. It's because he's black. <laughs> and he blends in with so the night. It, yeah. In the previous movie, didn't you hear his footsteps like constantly? Almost positive. Is he is he tippy toeing in this one? <laughs> so he's I guess. So he's like no, it's because he's on all fours now. <laughs> okay, so he's sneaking, looking at the military, and they're all like, "Huh? I wonder where this giant gorilla could be." And then I, sh <laughs> I shit you not, I sh I'm not making this up. Kong picks up a bunch of dirt and throws it at them, much like Batman uses smoke bombs to uh, to uh, hide himself. He throws the dirt to blind all of them and he attacks all of them like he's freaking Batman. And I'm like, what is going on? The last thing I ever thought of was Kong being stealthy. And he beats the shit out of these tanks too. He actually fucks up these I tanks. Hate this movie. <laughs> 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 Next page. We're almost to the end. Uh, We're almost at the end. So they get to Lady Kong's uh, facility. They take out the military guys there. They're they're yep. very strong, apparently. Uh, and they're like, wait, she's not sad. She's pregnant. And it's like, and us as the audience is like, yeah, yeah she's she's pregnant. Yeah, we, we know. We got it. We got it, movie. This isn't a big revelation. It's to the point where they shouldn't have made it a surprise because everyone fucking knew. Like everyone who watches this with half a brain is going to be like, oh, yeah, she's pregnant. Um, so they go into her little thing and it's a, 
What is this giant elevator inside this big Another ship? Another one, that scene took so long. You didn't have to show the entire elevator ride. Also, that blue screen for the <laughs> elevator ride was the worst thing I've ever seen in this movie. What is this? Did they make it specifically for Kong? Is this like an unused missile silo? What is this thing that they're in? Who built it? Why did they build it? Did it? Wasn't this a new facility, or am I thinking about the previous one? Because then did they make? No, because Kong ripped through that previous That's one. That's right. This That's one's right. underground. Oh. <sighs> so they're mm. they're about to leave. The door's opening to the top, but then the army guy wakes up and closes it. What are they gonna do? Well, King Kong, he opens up the door like a hero. Remember, I think he's supposed to be the bad guy. But anyway, he's a hero in this one. He's, he's like, like screaming, and then the he's like, Argh! and then Lady Kong's just like, yeah. Hey! But Lady Kong, Lady Kong, uh, let's just say she's into group activities because she grabs the guy, like she wants him there too. Like, all right, like we get it, you're Polly. Anyway, so she grabs <laughs> the guy, and uh, I kind of like this because usually. In King Kong history, it's always been male Kong grabs the girl. Yeah. So I like the twist so of Lady it, Kong yeah. grabbing the guy. And also, I Kong he... looks super pissed that he was there. Yeah, he wasn't really thrilled about it. He's like, uh, my woman's touching you. How dare you cocking me? <laughs> <laughs> That's like when uh, you're trying to hang out with a girl in like high school or college. And it's like, hey, you want to hang out? And they're like, sure. And then you show up and like, this is my friend, Steve. And you're like, oh, she brought a guy to the... Oh, I thought this was a date. We must not oh, be on the same. It's like that one time that, you know, I was hanging out with my friend and she invited you over and then, you know, I'm playing Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Like that. It's yeah. weird, yeah. right? Yeah. It, I, I mean, I was just like, all right, you guys do what you need to do. I mean, I agree. It was weird. Uh, <laughs> but that's what this is like. Kong's like, I saved you and you have my baby. And who's that guy? Is he like your friend? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> um, yeah, so they escape and then there's like another. And by the way, I'm saying hillbilly. I'm not saying because they're from the South, and I'm not saying rednecks. I'm not being offensive. This movie is portraying them as stereotypical hillbilly and yep. rednecks. Like, this is, when I say that, I mean, that's what the movie wants me to think they Straw are. Straw hat type bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't like just, this isn't an accurate representation of most of the South, I feel like. Um, that being said, like, my <sighs> dad, my dad is a very Italian guy with a mustache who makes pasta all the time. So who am I to talk about stereotypes? <laughs> He should be on a video soon. I should get him in a review. Uh, let me know if you want my dad in the review. Uh, we have some ideas of what we can review together, but do you guys want to see me review a movie with my dad? <laughs> let me know. Um, yeah, so they they crash the hillbilly uh, thing. And it's so funny because the guy's like, what's up in our family reunion? And blah, 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 blah. In the background, you see the Kongs. But the blue screen is so poor that it almost looks like they're just right there next to the people. Like if you so were they're just still partying and it's just like, yeah, that's happening outside, whatever. Yeah, like the, the, the whole, the sense of scale and perspective does not work in this movie. No. And we watch, for our podcast, we watch fucking Toho Godzilla King Kong movies that somehow pull this off. That's even like, this This actually reminded me of the um, NES Godzilla game. Remember with the volcano? Oh, yeah. Where you had to jump over it, but it literally looked like it was so far away. Yeah, yeah, but it was like in the fort. It's so weird. But we watch these like <sighs> stupid like King Kong Godzilla movies from the past, and somehow I'm able to get more immersed in those than this. Anyway, so they all flee, and Lady Kong falls back into the barn. <laughs> Because she's going into labor. Baby time. It's baby time. She's about to have. A, she's about to go into labor, but then the military shows up, and Kong has to defend his lady, and he gets shot to shit again. It's, it's what is not, De Laurentiis's problem? It's not as bad as the previous one, but it's still a lot of blood. <laughs> It's super bloody, but How uh, not rated R? I don't know. <laughs> what? Uh, but yeah, so he like kills basically the entire army, which I think is again he did that in the previous one. Oh, no one cheers this time. The previous one, Jeff Bridges cheered when the army guys like, got yeah, blown. Yeah, that's what you get, you son of a bitch. Or whatever. Like, I was like, Whoa, like that's Whoa. really mean. <laughs> uh, so Kong kills all of them. He's like hurling tanks. I do like that Kong, Kong is hurling tanks and stuff. Uh, but then the main army guy, who I keep calling main army guy, I don't know his name. I think I, Ju I had this on with Justin earlier. I think he said that guy was in Beverly Hills Cop, the main army guy, but I'm not sure. Uh, so he's like shooting Kong. It was a little pistol. Yeah, and then Kong in his last effort. 
by the way, the guy has plenty of time to run because Kong holds his fist up for and he, a while. Yeah, and he's just standing there like, oh, well, I'm not going to get squished <laughs> by that giant hand. And then he just crushes the fucking t- I laughed. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed so hard. Uh, okay. So he's dead. Uh, Kong's heart is finally giving out. Or it could just be he's bleeding out from the millions of bullets that are inside of him. Why not uh, both? And Lady Kong gives birth to Baby Kong. And I told you, like, I think on paper, this scene must read really well and be very tragic. It's like Kong, like, oh. Lady Kong gives birth and King Kong crawls. He's, he's reaching for the baby. And, the, the and Linda here, Hamilton's all like, yes, reach for him. Because and then the, the, the dude's also like, let him see his son. Because <laughs> because gorillas can't talk and you need someone to give direction. And so yeah, the heroes are like, look at him, show him. And then the baby Kong's like, daddy. Oh. <laughs> and I'm, By the way, baby Kong, <laughs> it's just a guy in a gorilla suit. Yes. It's the same 100%. size as the humans. Yeah. Which I don't think, I think it should be a little bit bigger. Anyway, so it's just a guy in a gorilla suit. So you literally went through all that labor just to pop out like a cherry. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, it's like, daddy. Oh, and then, and then he dies and he's crying. And then the baby's like, what's going on? I just was born a second ago. And now I have to learn about death. What's going on? Reminds me of that sad video of the, uh, oh, that's going to that's gonna bum people out. I was watching some nature video where, like, a, uh, I think an antelope gave birth to an anelo- another antelope. And the baby antelope. I would hope it gave birth to another antelope. Yeah, yeah. Well, it gave birth to a tiger. <laughs> was, no, the yeah. antelope is, like, learning to walk, and it still has the placenta. And it's like, oh. And then a cheetah grabs it. And it's like, oh. Oh, that's going to be hard. That's, like, oh, so horrifying. Might have been a zebra. I don't know. Anyway, so this baby is just born in Kong, and it sees its dad die. So, it, like, it has to figure out what death is. And it's like, ah. <laughs> Uh, and it's very emotional and like it should be emotional but the effects are so b- the baby Kong looks like shit the adult Kongs look like shit the awful blue screening of Linda Hamilton and the other guy look like shit <laughs> so the scene that should read very very sadly is just very very cringy it's like um Last week we did collateral damage with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and when his family dies in the beginning, it should be sad. But the way it's filmed, it seems like it's in a parody movie. This is what this is like. This should be sad, but it's being filmed so poorly. Uh, yeah, and for some reason, more military people don't show up and kill the other Kongs. They, I, I assume, they flew them back to Borneo. Because now Lady Kong is in the woods. She's yeah, like, it's oh, a jungle or whatever. And hi, yeah, baby the, the Kong. Baby around. Kong's like yeah. swinging, and they're like, oh, you guy, oh man. And then it's like it's supposed to be a happy ending. You know what the happy ending was? What? It actually ending. Yeah, it, this this one's bad. This one's really <laughs> bad. You told me that it was. Uh, what was your wording? Some type some type of short. Hold on. The hell did you tell me? Mercifully, short. It, it's only an hour and thirty minutes. That's still too much. It's it's shorter than me and Newt's Ghostbusters two review, which ended up being longer than the movie. It 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 feels longer than it is. That's the thing. It's a short movie, but because it, it's bad. Yeah, because you it's want bad. it to be over. You want it? To, yes, yes. You very much want it to be over. Um. So, so that movie I mentioned <sighs> in the beginning that the, the director wanted to do. I think it was called. Uh, what was it? Um. Tai Tai Pan, right? Yeah. Tai Pan. So they ended up making that movie, different director, no Sean Connery. They made that movie and they made this, and it bankrupted Dino De Laurentiis' company. He he eventually rebounded. Because unlike other Italian directors, he actually made good movies. Occasionally he did schlock, but he eventually did the Silence of the Lambs movies and stuff like that. So <laughs> it bankrupted the company. Um Linda Hamilton said she liked that she wasn't the damsel in distress, but the movie wasn't very good. Uh, and then I sent you the clip, and uh-huh. I can only find someone filming their TV of this. Yeah. So the studio sent like the thing to Siskel and Ebert, and they they said we're not going to give you we'll, we're only going to give you clips for your local show, not your national show. And you have to sign a paper saying you won't show the clips on the other show. <laughs> Or we're not going to give you, we're, you're not allowed to have any of these clips. But this new one is so bad that the film company actually sent Roger and me letters saying they would let us show snippets of the film on our local TV shows in Chicago only if we promised in writing 
not to show you the same clips on this our national show. Obviously, they were scared, and obviously, neither one of us would sign such a letter. So, no scenes from King Kong Liz. That's almost a public service. Instead, <laughs> just this warning. If you don't believe me, or Roger, believe the film company that, think about it, couldn't find a single scene that it wanted you to see. Uh, so how's this rank in your King Kong <laughs> How would you rank this with all the other King Kongs? Here's the other ones? Yeah. I can't even show where this is. <laughs> Better than King, uh, worse than King Kong Escapes? No, that one was actually uh, that one was actually stupid. But I had a robot Kong. <laughs> I, I laughed. At yeah. Like, you know, it, it wasn't like the like ha ha ha. It's really bad. Yeah. I was just kind of like oh ha ha. It's hard to think Kong seventy six as a disappointing sequel because it's like all right, Kong seventy six is fine. Like I shouldn't feel like that wasn't it ruined the memory of the previous one because the previous one's not great. But yeah, this one sucked. This one was so fucking bad. Were they just trying to force another one out to like... I don't know why, because I think the first one did okay. I think it made money, but it wasn't like a huge cultural impact. I mean, it helped Jessica Lange and Jeff Bridges' career, but I don't think anyone wanted a second Kong, especially 10 years later. I mean, like, what... In, uh, Maybe it had to do something with the rights where they had to, like, do something to make... You know how, like, with uh, Sony and Spider-Man? Well, well, like I said, there was a lot of legal issues. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, maybe yeah. there was, like, a thing like that but, like, they imagine, had to make it. Imagine getting, like, a sequel to the Broderick Godzilla in 2008. That's what this is like. It'd be weird, right? It'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that movie. They're doing a sequel to that one? Seems odd. Didn't they leave it open at the end, too? Yeah, and the cartoon series picks it up. Uh, but yeah, uh, skip this one. Skip it. Unless, like, you're, like, super bored, you're trying to do, like, a drinking game, or some, I don't know, something stupid. Yeah. Have fun. Drink every time there's a bad blue screen yeah. shot. <laughs> You'll be dead. <laughs> Drink every time you see the <laughs> Lady Kong titties. <laughs> well, Johanna, that was fun. What's not fun is, how am I going to sell all this stuff you got me from DC? Well, I have some interested buyers. Oh. Uh, you should put on this hat just because it's funny. Oh, okay. Are we gonna like take a picture so people know yeah. what they're getting? I'm gonna take should, a picture of you with should everything. I, should I hold this replica flag? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can smile. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. I guess people will see that picture and then want to buy the stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Totally. Let me, uh, just... Is that is that something else you got from DC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want oh. to show it off. Oh. See how everybody felt about it, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's yeah. that's pretty interesting. And Oh, it, it looks like there's someone outside. Oh my god, smoke bomb! <laughs> what? <laughs> United States Senate! Oh, you bitch, you set me up!